Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his debt, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him, he has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. We 
stand. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is from Hebrews chapters 4 and 5. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. We stand. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross, and so remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion, that we may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, the 18th and 19th chapters. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley 
where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to him, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl, who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. 
So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the 
soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Please stand as you are able. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, 
but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus 
had bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. In the name of Jesus. The Psalms are the focus of this year's sacred Triduum, beginning last night and ending on Easter Sunday. But this afternoon, there is a different kind of song of the Spirit for us to consider. The final servant song of Isaiah. It begins, Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up shall be exalted. Normally the language of lifting up and exaltation is associated with strength and power and majesty and success. The mighty are lifted up. But the song of the servant takes a sharp turn after its very first lyric. Many were astonished at Jesus. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths because of him. The servant who is lifted up is disfigured. He looks more like a worm than a man. There are no words to describe it. People have a hard time even looking at him. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. This can only mean that this servant is high and lifted up on a cross. Not on a dais, not on a litter, not on top of his inferiors. He is lifted up in mockery, for all to see and laugh at. The more squeamish who pass by can't even stand to look because of the stripes and the bruises that he bears. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. The irony is that while this servant has the power of God at his disposal, 
even the ability to call down a legion of angels to fight for him. He doesn't even open his mouth. He willingly accepts the chastisement of his father, sent to him by the hands of cruel men. He accepts the abuse of his brothers as if he himself were the sinner. This is a servant of a wholly different order. His servanthood mirrors the service that the sacrificial lamb gives to the household feast. He gives his life so that others can celebrate By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. Even in death, he is numbered with the transgressors. So, his grave is a prologue to the coming glory. A rich man, Joseph of Arimathea by name, lends him a grave so that he would not have to take his Sabbath rest in a pauper's tomb. But not even the rich man knows the treasure that he buries there in the ground. Because when his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. The servant suffers willingly, and because of his suffering, he is declared to be righteous. But he does not keep it for himself. He was raised for our justification. And so he shares a portion of his treasure with the many and accounts them to be righteous by faith. His days are prolonged in the resurrection. And he has seen and continues to see his offspring, the children of God who pass through the waters of holy baptism to benefit from his cross and resurrection. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sins of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. In the name of Jesus.
us pray for the whole Christian church, that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation of Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy so that your church, spread throughout all the nations, may be defended against the adversary and may serve you in the true faith and persevere in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens, that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially Joseph, our president, the Congress of the United States, J, our governor, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, our Lord God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick, and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into his family, the Church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you, free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy Church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as fitting for Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord, that we may serve you in true fear, to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God will remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O almighty, everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you 
that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth that God would send out his blessing upon them and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your grace be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits of the earth whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world.
the Lord. What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have conquered all the foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O oh, my people, the Lord. What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? Oh, my people.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree, tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, by your lasting and guarding peace. Amen. Let us pray. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people, who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
friends. <laughs>